and, and support you in picking out the right club. Not that I play golf, actually, but um, <laughs> but just um, you know by you know being there to support them. Hello and welcome to our Meet the Coach series. I'm your host, Carla Egan. And today we're talking to a coach that's really passionate about helping emerging leaders in their career. Uh, he wants to make a difference for young leaders because he knows what it's like being in the trenches, having those difficult conversations and learning lessons the hard way. Uh, our guest today is Robert Pellegretti and he joins me today from Sydney, New South Wales. Welcome, Robert. Thank you, Carla. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Now, we're here to talk about coaching emerging leaders. So let me ask, let me start by asking you, what made you choose to support these types of professionals? I've been in their position before um, and I have a lot of experience, over 25 years experience uh, leading uh, large teams, uh, small teams, being an individual contributor when you're also a leader, um, even when you, if you don't have direct reports. Um, and what I find is there's a lot of uh, coaching um, uh, available to um, executives, but the uh, I find that there's a gap in regards to emerging leaders, young leaders who are who are super smart and uh, need uh, need uh, some extra, um, I suppose, need someone in their corner, need some extra support, because often their leaders are time poor and their leaders are often worrying about, well, you know, their careers and their next transaction uh, with their team. So I saw an opportunity to be, uh, to be there to support, guide and listen leaders that that probably aren't getting a lot of that coaching um, and mentorship uh, when they're in the corporate uh, world or when they're you know in that in the in the hierarchy of, 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 of organizations. So I saw an opportunity there because I'm, I remember being a young leader myself mm. and sometimes it can be a very lonely place and sometimes you just need someone, to talk to and not necessarily uh, be told what to do, but, you know, someone to ask the hard questions and even uh, discuss some of the potential hard conversations or presentations that have to occur um, that, that they may need support on. Um, so that's that's why I focused on the emerging leaders because I feel that, that, um, that there's a gap um, between uh, from from a coaching perspective and the people that I see today you know, these guys are super smart and sometimes they just need that person in the background uh, to, to you know to, to, to guide them and and I often I often say to them look you you got to look at me as like I'm your caddy and you're you know and you're the pro golfer and sometimes I'm there to help guide, uh, and, and and support you in picking out the right club. Not that I play golf, actually, but um, <laughs> but just um, you know by you know being there to support them. I like your caddy analogy. And look, I think there is this common assumption when people move through their career from being a team member to becoming a team leader or a supervisor or a manager that um, they. Th that it doesn't require, it requires the same skill set, but there's different skill sets. And leadership in itself is a challenge. Um, so what are some of the common challenges that you've seen in throughout your career, but also with the clients, the, the professionals that you're helping? What are some of those challenges? Some of the key challenges that I, I've had to help uh, people through is, is um, when you and you've touched on it there, Carla, which is actually quite interesting, is when you're in the team and then all of a sudden you become the leader of that team, right? So you're emerging, right? At, you know, at one point you were a colleague of this team and then all of a sudden you, you've been elevated and you become the leader of this team. And what I uh, help and, um, and coach is how to elevate 
yourself from being a colleague to actually being the leader of that team that once you were part of that team and what tends to happen is organizations they promote they'll promote um, this person and say hey look congratulations you're now the leader of this team but but it's some of these nuances about you know some of the uh, 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 personalities and some of the personal uh, aspects of when you're a colleague that 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 you you know a leader of that leader doesn't doesn't sort of talk about you know how you know how do i elevate myself this is questions that i get all the time robert how do i elevate myself without sounding like oh it's gone to her head or i'm arrogant so i just talk mm-hmm. about you know positioning yourself um as uh, as as being accountable and being responsible and telling telling this team hey look you know i, I am the leader um, you know, you're important, you're an important, um, uh, you know, the, the team is very important to the success, you're very, you're very important. And to elevate yourself through, through accountability, responsibility and taking them on the journey. Because often, and I've seen this, emerging leaders think, well, okay, now I'm the leader, so I need to detach myself to elevate myself. And that's actually where it can go wrong. And that's, mm. and that's, where I, that's one of the most common discussions that I have. I mean, the other common discussions are often about, you know, having to fire someone or have one of those conversations where you have to give some feedback that you know is not going to be um, pleasant. Um, but, but the, 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 I mean, that, that, that's, 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 that's a common one as well. But I, I, I wanted to highlight this one because this is where I've seen a lot of good leaders end up leaving an organization because they they haven't made that transition from being a colleague mm. to a leader of people that they were colleagues um, with or were were their peers at the time. I think it's an important distinction. Um, and for the leaders that might be following and, and listening to um, this episode, what's one key area, what's one thing that existing leaders or emerging leaders that are on their pathway in their career to people leadership, what's one thing that they can do to lead uh, with greater impact? One thing I always discuss with um, some of my coaches is the importance of self-care. Now, I'm not going to talk about, I mean, I'm going to mention it. Mental health. I mean, it is it's it's it is a common a, a common term. But I like to make a distinction because there is a distinction between self care and mental health. Self care is about um, uh, you know, ensuring that um, both physically and emotionally um, um, and 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 also mentally that you're looking after yourself so you can. Set yourself up. Set yourself up for leadership success. Now, what does that look like? Okay, I mean, obviously, there's the regular things like regular exercise, but also uh, an opportunity of self-reflection and 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 and, and um, using self-awareness uh, as a tool to keep to keep you in check with, you know, with um, you know, with how you're doing as a leader. Uh, in, in terms of you know you know what am I doing? Uh, how did I go this week? Uh, gee, I could have maybe done that a little bit different because it's quite confronting, and that's where the mm. emotional care comes in. Because sometimes you've got to have you've got to be prepared to have hard conversations with yourself, um, because sometimes you're not always going to get it right, and yeah. uh, and that's why that point of reflection, um, uh, and whether it be weekly or at the end of the day. Even just for ten minutes, okay. What you know? What did I do well? Um, you know what? You know what can I do better? Because there's going to be some mm. really tough days as a leader, especially when you have to uh, make some organisational changes, um, or you have to have uh, difficult conversations, or one of your team, um, you know, is quite ill. Um, and um, so, so that's why it's important that you look after yourself as a leader, because if you don't 
look after yourself, then uh, it, it will impact how you lead and, and, and how you take your team with you on the journey as a leader. Yeah, well said. And I think that, you know, when uh, traditionally, uh, and I see this common myself, when leaders have team responsibilities, they tend to put their team's welfare uh, first, which often means that they put themselves last. So I like your focus on self-care and, and reflection as well. Um, Robert, as a career coach, focused on helping leaders to successfully make that career transition into leadership, what does joining the coaching directory mean for you and for your business? Well, joining the coaching directory uh, enables me uh, to uh, to actually develop uh, my own um, my own skills as a coach because you're with other like-minded people, and the content that is provided to us by the coaching directory. There's always a gold nugget there that I find. Um, that I didn't know, you know, because sometimes, uh, you, know, you know, at the time, you know, sometimes when you're a coach, you, 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 you think when someone asks you something or, you know, you think, oh, God, you know, what, you know, oh, how, how do I, how, you know, how do I do this or how do I address this? This is a new thing. So I find that some of those gold nuggets are useful um, because they're things that I haven't encountered or they're discussions mm -hmm. I haven't had. Um, and you know, I, I had to, I had the opportunity to to to, to connect with a coach, uh, um, Carolyn, I think her name was, lovely lovely lady, and she was uh, coaching around um, people's well being. She was working with um, some schools, and that was totally different to what I was doing. But yeah. some of the concepts there were transferable to me, and her energy. So it's you know and, and you know we talked about the imposter syndrome, which is which is something that I know coaches sometimes uh, you know find challenging, and it was just great to talk to someone, um, you know, and learn and, and, and you know and and um, you know and share experiences, you know, and see what their coaching world uh, like you know, is like because often you know when you are a coach you don't want to become uh, parochial or insular because you know there's always something to learn that will benefit the people that I'm that I'm working with and you know and I, and I see the coaching directory supporting my journey of you know of you know of self-care uh, and discovery. Wonderful and, and we're delighted to have you on uh, our directory Robert and thank you. That brings us to the end of our uh, Meet the Coach interview today. Thank you Robert um, for highlighting a development need which can sometimes be overlooked in career advancement. Thank you Carla, thanks for having me. Uh, and thank you to our listeners um, for joining us and for following our Meet the Coach uh, series and episodes. If you enjoy our show, please rate and review us and be sure to catch us on the next episode. This is Carla Regan from the Coaching Directory, where we connect you to your ideal coach. Mm -hmm.